Yes. Get ready to take control of your own financial destiny. Yes. It's time to build your dream business. Welcome to the Empowered Entrepreneur. This just got exciting. With your host, Spider Graham. Your education starts now. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the broadcast. This is Spider, and this time around, I want to talk about the concept of setting expectations. Now, it's an interesting place to go. And by the way, if you work in any kind of business, and there are also personal expectations, which we'll talk about, there is always an opportunity to make sure that other people are on the same page that you're on. So setting expectations is partly about that. But a big part of what we're really focusing on is how to reduce disappointment. Because what happens sometimes is that there's a, there's a difference between what somebody expects to happen and what actually happens. And so we want to find ways to manage expectations to basically lower the delta between these two points. Because the challenge that we run into is that if someone has expectations that are outside of what's really going to happen, then they're automatically going to be disappointed. Now, several years ago, I had one of these conversations that you really don't want to have with a client who is very, very, very unhappy. And we're on the phone, and we're running a campaign for her, a, a, a banner ad campaign, and she's very unhappy because she's not getting the click-through rate that she expected on this campaign. And so I'm trying to placate her, and I'm trying to get her to understand that I know she expected this, but the reality was that getting a 6% click-through rate on her campaign probably wasn't ever going to happen. Now, I'm not sure where she came up with this original figure that she was expecting 6%. And it's very possible, especially when you work in a sales-driven organization, that somebody said something along the way that made her think, oh, we're going to get almost 5 to 6% of people clicking on our ad. And, of course, if you're not getting that, you are going to be disappointed. Of course, the punchline here is that her campaign was actually doing a really, really good job for what it was. It was getting almost 1% click-through rate. But she was very unhappy. Now, I was able to finally talk her off the ledge, but it's a very hard conversation to have. And one of the things that I've learned in my career is that by being able to have these conversations beforehand, instead of having to have someone yell at you afterward, it's a lot more fun. It's a lot more pleasant. So when I sit down with my clients, I do what I can to try to make sure that they understand what the parameters are. And I've learned this the hard way as, as well as anyone else. And one of the examples I love to share is several years ago, I was working with a client who wanted to create a a banner campaign. And like most of my clients, the conversation usually goes something like, well, we want to drive traffic to our websites. And I have the tendency, and by the way, I'm very serious about this, to go in and I'm not trying to cause trouble, but I'm trying to really drill down. And I often ask the question, why? Which sometimes really confuses the heck out of them. So you say, okay, uh, we're trying to drive traffic to our website. And I'm like, okay, why? Well, a lot of times they really don't know the answer. They, they, they know they need to drive traffic, and that's as far as it goes. And actually, my favorite answer was one woman. There was this long pause, and she said, because I thought we were supposed to? Uh, you know, I don't know why you're doing it, but you should figure out at some point what it is you're trying to accomplish, right? That's really what we're doing here. If you're going to be spending lots of money on advertising, there must be some sort of goal, some objective. So I asked this woman I'm on the phone with, what is it you're trying to accomplish? And she said, well, we want people to come to our landing page so that they can learn more about our products and so they can print out a brochure. I said, okay, that's fantastic. So you already have a goal in place. You already have a clear objective. And it's not just click through. Love that. And by the way, now I'm working for a company that does rich media advertising at the time. And so rich media advertising is fantastic in that it really allows you to put a lot more functionality into the ad space. And so I say to this client, well, you know what? I have a fantastic idea. What you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish can all be done within the ad space and without requiring the consumer to go anywhere else at all. Okay, they don't need to go anywhere because they're going to be coming into this ad. They're going to be rolling over this button or something or clicking on this print button and they're going to print it right out right then. They don't have to go someplace else to get it. What do you think? It's just like, oh, that sounds fantastic. Yeah, let's do that. So we worked on this campaign, and it was a very simple campaign. Everything really focused on getting people to click on the print button. Now, when I run campaigns, what I like to do is I like to give it a full week, and usually a weekend as well, to get a better sense of how it's performing in the marketplace. So I waited about a week after the campaign went live, and I went in and I looked at the back end to get a sense of of whether we were reaching our goals, and I was absolutely blown away because what I discovered was that the campaign was getting an almost 11% interaction rate on that print button, 
which means that approximately 11% of all the people who are seeing that ad were rolling over the print button or clicking on it in some way to print out the brochure. And by the way, as a side, the really cool thing about this model is all that printing was done using the consumer's paper and ink. Okay, the advertiser wasn't even paying for that, yet they were getting the benefits. This is a fantastic, fantastic campaign. And I was absolutely so thrilled. And so I called the client up. And you know those moments. You're feeling really excited and you want to share the good news. You have a little swagger in your step. So I said, hey, have you seen the results of the campaign? And she said, yes, and we're not happy. And I'm like, huh? What do you, what do you mean you're not happy? Uh, you know, 11%. 11% is incredible. No one gets 11%. And she said, maybe so, but we're only getting a 0.01% percent click-through rate and we're going to pull the campaign and you know what that's exactly what they did and I remember hanging the phone up and kind of picking my jaw up off the floor and saying wow you know a I didn't see that coming followed by B interesting the same campaign but depending on how you look at it on one side it's an incredible runaway success and on the other side it's an unmitigated disaster now, the challenge, and I imagine what happened at some point, is that while we had had a conversation about what we were going to do that was different, and we were going to focus on different things outside of click-through, I'm sure somebody in her organization looked at the numbers and said, well, we're losing money on this campaign, we're not getting the click-through rates, and probably yelled at her. And, you know, all right. And had I done a better job of setting her expectations, I might have been able to help her be in a position of being able to say to anyone who said, hey, we're getting a really crappy click-through rate, to say, yes, but it doesn't matter. We're not focusing on click-through. Any click-through we get is absolute gravy. What we're focusing on is conversion, and this is how we're doing it. Anyhow, you learn your lessons, and you move on. And I've learned by setting expectations on the minds of my clients, you can make your life a lot better. Now, another example, and this happens to a lot of us, especially anybody who's in a production or deadline-driven business, is that there are times when the best laid plans are just not going to happen. You know, that deadline that you really set out for, it starts to look like it's probably not going to be met. And that's a problem, and nobody likes being in that position, but guess what? It happens, and it happens more often than you might think. So there are different ways of approaching this. So let's just say that you have a scenario in which you have something that's due and you told the client you get it to them on Friday afternoon. Halfway down the week, you start looking at it and say, you know what, we've had setbacks, someone didn't show up, schedule's messed up, whatever it is, things happen. And you say, you know what, I don't think we're gonna meet, meet that Friday deadline as much as we might want to. So you start pushing more resources out it, getting more people to work on it, but you know what, it's just not working, it's not gonna happen. And so Friday comes along and you're stressing out. You're saying, oh, we have all this that we have to do still. We don't have enough time. How are we going to get this done? Come on. And everyone's having a miserable time. And it's now Friday afternoon and the client was expecting this stuff. But you're working hard. You're going to do it. You're going to, you know, you don't. It's now Friday night and everyone's frazzled. But you still have something. And somebody's working late that night trying to get it done. And, you know, and somebody ends up pulling an all-nighter. How's that for fun, okay? And now they're in a position where it's now Saturday morning. And they haven't slept in over a day, and they're not happy, and the work is probably not at its best because, let's face it, we don't really do so well when we're stressed out and sleep deprived. And you finally deliver this. You finally send an email to the client Saturday at noon saying, hey, we have the job done. And guess what? The client is pissed. And why is the client pissed? Because you told them it would be there Friday afternoon. And frankly, they're not all that blown away by the fact that you had someone stay up all night working on it. They're not looking at this going, wow, that's incredible. You did that for us. What they're saying is you told us it would be there on Friday, and it wasn't there on Friday. So all that hard work, all that stress is still going to have a client who's unhappy. So what do you do about this? How do you deal with this? Well, you reset expectations along the way. And instead of waiting and trying to do something heroic and stupid you find yourself doing something smarter, such as setting their expectations earlier in the process. And you go and you say, you know, it's Wednesday, and we're looking at the schedule, we've had some setbacks, and I don't think we're going to make our Friday deadline. I'm not happy about it, but guess what? It is what it is. And now you call the client up, or you send an email, and you say, hey, look, I know we said we'd have this to you on Friday, and I really want to, and we're still going to try like heck to make sure that you have it on Friday but I want to give you a heads up that we're running into some problems and we may have to let the deadline slip. Can we, can we get it to you on Saturday? 
And they may say, you know, hey, by the way, thanks for letting me know. You know what? We're not in the office on Saturday. We're not going to need it. We don't need it Sunday either. You know, Monday works. Hey, we actually can take it on Tuesday if you need some extra time to finish it up. Seriously, the conversations often go like this. So now you have a client who's like, oh, Tuesday. Yeah, Friday was good. We'd like it. But you know what? We don't need it. It's not a drop dead deadline. And most of them aren't. Tuesday. Well, guess what happens now? It's now Wednesday. And you can kind of do it right. And you don't have to stress out. And you don't have to have somebody work like an idiot all night Friday night to try to get something done. Okay? Yeah, you still have to do the job, and you're going to work really hard to get as much of it done by Friday as possible. You might even do a better job because you're not going to be freaking out. You know, maybe someone can work on it on Saturday. Maybe someone has some time on Sunday. Maybe you can take all day Monday and do it right and do it to the satisfaction of both you and your client. And then when you send it to them on Monday afternoon because it's done, guess what? They love you. They were expecting it on Tuesday, and now it's a day early, and you're a rock star. And that's the important thing. That's what you want to be able to do. So focus on these dreams. Focus on the idea of being able to communicate expectations with your customers. That's what you want to be able to do. When you want to make sure that there's no disconnect and frankly, there's no disappointment at the other end. And sometimes all it really takes is a little bit of good communication to get them pointing in the right direction. Now, I also want to talk about setting our own expectations for ourselves. Now, as an entrepreneur, I never run out of things to do. And I always have deadlines. And I always disappoint myself because I never get as much done as I want to get done. By the way, I'm, I'm the ultimate optimist when it comes to time. Right? I, have, I will look at a job and I'll say, eight hours, not a problem. We'll get that done eight hours. And then you find yourself working on it three days later going, mm, okay, maybe I was a bit hasty in my judgment of time. And I've grown to expect this of myself, right? I'm not picking on myself because I know this is what happens. So I'll say eight hours, but we'll, we'll put another 20 in there as a buffer because it does happen. So now I'm in a situation where I'm trying to figure out how to make sure that I'm not disappointing myself by missing my deadlines or taking on too much work or whatever it is. And give yourself permission to have flexibility. Give yourself permission to have some challenges. Factor in a little bit of failure. Factor in some of the things that are not going to go right. right? Now, we talk a lot about this. We talked about this. We talked about setting goals as well. Is we don't want to put ourselves in a situation where we honestly believe that, okay, this is what I'm trying to do. And it's a perfectly straight line on a smoothly paved road between here and there. And there are unicorns and rainbows floating around. And it's a perfect sunny day every day. Right? Expect instead that there are going to be obstacles. You're going through a jungle, you have a machete in your hand, you don't know where the path is, and there are rocks, big rocks, big, big, big rocks everywhere. Okay? This is more what reality is like. You're going to get there. It's just going to take you a long time. It's going to be more slow, and you're going to have to figure your way past some of these problems. It's going to happen. So if you set the expectations that these things are going to happen, then you're not going to be freaking out when they do happen, okay? I'm going to work on this project. Here's what I expect. I'm going to finish it. However, along the way, I will have setbacks. I will have things that don't go right the first time. I will have things that waste my time and my energy and my money that are disappointing. But you know what? They're going to happen anyway. So why don't I just expect them? And I'm not talking about taking on a negative mindset. Not at all. I'm talking about being realistic about setbacks. I'm talking about looking at things that can go wrong. And you know what happens? It's actually fascinating because when you find yourself in a situation where you, you expect everything to be perfect all the time and something goes wrong, you're often shocked. What? Huh? How did that go wrong? Huh? And, you know, and you have yourself a miserable day. But if you look at this and say something's going to go wrong somewhere along the way, when it happens, you go, aha, I've been expecting you. And I'm serious about this. I mean, I ask, it's a kind of a goofy question, but I'll talk to my students when we're talking about this kind of a topic. And I say, all right, question for you all. How many of you have ever burned or cut your hand in the past? And every hand goes up. Everyone has hurt themselves in some stupid way and bled a little bit some point during their life. Okay. So I said, oh, by the way, how many of you enjoy the process of burning or cutting yourselves? And strangely enough, no hands go up. All right. So you know that it happens. Nobody likes it. That's fine. We understand this. So now, how many of you expect that some point in the future, at some time in the future, 
you're probably going to cut or burn your hand again. And it's interesting because people will laugh about it. And most of them will raise their hands. Okay. So you fully expect, if you think about it, that in the future, you're probably going to hurt yourself. Do you want to hurt yourself? No. Do you think it's probably going to happen anyway? Absolutely. That's part of being alive. That's part of just day to day. We do things that make ourselves bleed. I'm not, you know, hopefully not losing any major limbs or, or, or fingers, but you know, all right, I hurt myself. So now you go about your life and at some point in the future, you're cutting some vegetables and the knife slips and you stick it into the palm of your hand and you look at it and instead of going, what? I can't believe I cut myself. You go, oh, there you are. I knew you would happen. It's a very different mindset. And I know it's a very goofy example, but the reason I bring it up is because you really want to make sure in your own world that you are comfortable with what happens. Stuff's going to happen. Not always good stuff. You're going to have some crap that takes place in your life that's going to make you unhappy. You know, I don't enjoy having the flu. I probably will have the flu in the future. And when I get the flu, instead of going, what? I can't believe I have the flu. I'll go, no, oh, there it is. There's the flu. Setting your own expectations setting the expectations of your clients. It's all part and parcel. It's all a similar process. And it really is there to mitigate any type of disappointment and disagreement and any point of conflict. So conflict within your own mind, conflict within your business relationships, it can all be done if we just take a few minutes to remind ourselves that things do happen that are not perfect. They're going to continue to happen. And if you just keep an eye out for them, you're probably not going to be surprised when they do. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. This is Spider Graham. Love having some time with you. Come back real soon. We'll talk. For more free resources and advice for entrepreneurs, visit spidergram.com and become a subscriber today.